How's it going people? For today's video, we're going to take an in-depth look at the new vehicle update that just came out in LEGO Fortnite. I'm going to explain how to unlock all of the cars, as well as the new food items. I'm also going to show how to unlock the wrench and explain what these little numbers mean in the bottom right. The numbers, Mason. What do they mean? And I'm also going to show how to put turbo boost on the new vehicles. But first, I want to explain how to unlock the vehicles. I already had the off-roader unlocked. If you don't have it unlocked, all you'll need to do is put Flexwood in your inventory. And you can find Flexwood in the Dry Valley biome. And that not only unlocks the off-roader, but it also unlocks all of the pieces used to build the off-roader. So technically you can use those pieces for other builds if you want to. Same thing with the hauler, I already had this one unlocked. But if you don't, all you'll need to do is just put frost pine in your inventory. But I did need to unlock the speeder. The only way you can unlock it is by adding a power cell to your inventory. So before we go further, the first thing I want to do is explain how to get that power cell. So in order to unlock the power cell recipe, you have to make a compost bin which can be found with the other equipment. And for me, initially it didn't show up. The way I was able to unlock the compost bin was by crafting planks at the lumber mill. As soon as I crafted planks, the recipe appeared. So that's how I was able to unlock the compost bin. Here's all of the materials required to build it. And the way it works is you put in resources such as bone, animal resources like silk, shells, claws, and I believe seeds also work. You put in any of these type of items and eventually they'll turn into biomass, fertilizer, or soil. And it actually takes a long time to process. So you may want to put down a couple of compost bins just because of how long it takes. I want to say it took probably about five minutes almost just for this first batch to process. But yeah, like I said, you get fertilizer, soil, but you also get this new material called biomass. And as soon as you pick up that biomass, you'll unlock the recipe for the power cells, which again is what you need to unlock the speeder vehicle. So craft some planks at the lumber mill, make your compost bin. You can throw either seeds, bones, or animal materials into it. Then you take the biomass out of it, go to the crafting table, and craft your power cell. And as soon as you craft the power cell, you'll unlock the speeder as well as all of the pieces that are used to build the speeder. So that's how you unlock all of the vehicles, the compost bin, and the power cell. There's also a new charm called the Illuminator. And here's everything you'll need to craft it. When it comes to the purple thermal fish, a really good location you can find them in is the Dry Valley Lake. I found five of them today in that location. You can also find them in the grassland shore area as well as the dry valley shore. But yeah, it doesn't really take up a charm slot. It's more of equipment because when you place it in your equipment, it takes the place of your compass. And basically what it does is it lightens up the area around you. It pretty much looks like a bunch of fireflies are following you around. I don't think it's as bright as a torch, but if you have this equipped, you don't really need a torch anymore. So that's how you get the new Illuminator equipment and that's what it looks like. There's also a new wrench and I'm going to explain how to use this wrench. The description that came with it said you can assign switches and thrusters to channels, which means you can control as many thrusters as you'd like using three separate switches rather than having one switch controlling everything. Unlock the recipe for the wrench by adding a wooden rod to your inventory. So once you add a wooden rod to your inventory, all you have to do is go to your crafting table and you should be able to craft it under tools. It requires three wooden rods and one cord. I did mess around with it a lot and it never lost any durability. So I think you'll only need to craft one of these. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and explain how this works. Like the description said, you can assign switches and thrusters to different channels using this wrench. So we're gonna use my monorail as an example. I used to have two separate monorails facing each other but not really connecting with each other. And I had two different switches, two different thrusters. But after today's update, I can actually put both thrusters on just one dynamic foundation piece while using just one switch, thanks to our wrench. And the way it works is you pull your wrench out, you look at your activation switch, you choose which channel you want it to be on, and then you assign a channel to each of your thrusters. 
So you look at your thruster with your wrench out and you assign it a channel, either one, two or three. And then you'll look at your other thruster and you'll assign that a different channel. So you'll give one thruster channel one and the other thruster will be channel two. And then all you have to do is select which channel you currently want to use by looking at your switch. And then you select whichever thruster you want to use. You'll select that channel while looking at your switch with your wrench out. So in this example, we're going to turn on channel two so we can get this thruster going. And again, we assigned this other thruster to have channel one. So if I ever wanna go in reverse, all I have to do is pull my wrench out, look at the switch, change the channel to channel one, and that's gonna make us go in the other direction because the other thruster is tied to channel one. So that's how the wrench works. I assume you can do the same thing with other builds like elevators, airships, planes. You can also use the wrench to change the direction of the tires on your vehicle. So if you want all your tires to go in reverse instead of forward, you can do that using your wrench. There's also four new villagers. The only one that I saw today was Lynx. And here's what Lynx looks like. But we also got three other new villagers. One is Oscar. The other one is Jules and the last one is Comet. So we got a total of four new villagers today and we also got three new food items. You unlock these by taking a shovel to the Frostlands biome and digging up some snow. In order to craft ice cream, all you'll need is milk and snow. For the snowberry ice cream, you'll need snowberries, milk and snow. And for the spicy ice cream, you'll need spicy peppers, milk, and snow. Ice cream just heals you. The snowberry ice cream will keep you cool for 10 minutes. It also gives you 17 hearts. So you'll wanna eat that before you go into the Dry Valley Caves. And the spicy ice cream keeps you warm for 10 minutes. So you'll wanna eat that before you go into the Frostland Caves. But yeah, you unlock them by digging up snow and you craft those items at the juicer. There was also a ton of skins that get a Lego version with today's update. I'm not gonna go over these individually, but I will leave a link in the description to where I found this list if you wanna check it out. But yeah, there were a lot of skins added with today's update. And there was also some bug fixes, major improvements and adjustments, which I'm not gonna waste any time over. But I do wanna craft each of the new vehicles and take them out for a spin. And I also wanna explain what these numbers mean and how to get them. So first, let's start with the speeder. And in order to build it, you'll have to go to where the pre-built buildings are in your inventory. Scroll all the way to the bottom and you'll see the new vehicles there. And they pretty much work like the pre-built buildings. Here's everything required to build it. And if you want to look at the full list of materials, you have to select show more and it'll show you everything you'll need to build the entire vehicle. So that's everything you need for the speeder. Once you place it down, you'll have like a certain amount of stages to where you have to place pieces down and complete each stage. For the speeder, we only have four stages, so it doesn't really take that long to build. Before we actually get into it, we do need to put one of our new fuel cells into the engine, and that's pretty much gonna act like our battery. You can see how much battery life we have at the bottom. So you may wanna carry some extra power cells just so you never run out. So I noticed not only can you drive it by using the right trigger, but you can also drive it by using the left thumb stick. But yeah, we only got one seat with this one. Uh, it doesn't really take a long time to build. And yeah, that's what the new speeder looks like. Now we're gonna go ahead and craft the off-roader. Here's all of the materials you need for that. And we built this the same way we built the speeder. We placed down the foundation and then added the pieces required for each stage until it was complete. And for this one, we only had five stages. This one has a total of four seats. So you can take your friends or villagers riding around with you if you want. You also have an extra space to store more fuel cells. So it should last a little bit longer. But yeah, that's what the new off-roader looks like. And we also have a hauler, which is the biggest vehicle. And here's all of the resources needed to build it. It actually goes a lot faster than I expected it to. You'll also have to climb upstairs in order to get inside of it. And there's also a lot more storage for more fuel cells. You can hold a total of four fuel cells with this one. And for this vehicle, we actually had seven stages. So that's what the three new vehicles look like in game. Now, before I explain how I was able to put turbo boost on the new vehicles, I should probably explain how to use this new one, two, three feature. And for those who don't know, these represent your different channels. And these three numbers will appear on any structure that has 
a car seat on it. So that's why you see the one, two, three. If we go back to our monorail, for an example, uh, once we place down a car seat and sit down in that car seat, we'll then see the one, two, three pop up. And all you have to do is select the one that represents the thruster you want to go off. So if we want channel one to go off, all you have to do is just press the one button and that's gonna make the channel one thruster ignite. And if you want the channel two thruster to go off, you just press the two button. So that's how you make the one, two, three buttons appear and that's how you control them. So with that being said, I went ahead and put this foundation piece on the off-roader vehicle near the back. I placed a thruster on that vehicle and then I pulled out my wrench and assigned that thruster to channel two. Once you do that, again, all you have to do is hop in the driver's seat. You'll see the one, two, three appear. And just like with the monorail, all you have to do is select the channel that you have your thruster attached to. So in this example, we had it on channel two. So all I have to do is just press two and that's gonna make your thruster go off whenever you're driving. So that's how I was able to put turbo boost on the vehicles. That's how the wrench works as well as the different channels. And I believe that sums up everything that was included in today's vehicle update. Hopefully you all found this video useful. If you did, be sure to drop a like. And if you really wanna support the channel, use creator code A1. Anyways, let me know what you think about this vehicle update in the comments below. Hope you all have a wonderful day and thanks for watching.